South Florida. We've got all kind of herbs growing out here. We have parsley, chives, rosemary, basil, um, thyme, oregano, and mint, and sage. And we use a lot of fresh herbs in the different things we cook, and we're gonna make some pesto now. So come inside and we'll go make pesto. Our family loves pesto. We have a lot of things with pesto pasta. Tonight we're have, actually having lasagna that I'm gonna put some pesto in the tomato sauce. So in the uh, food processor, we have about four cups of fresh basil that I just took off the stems and put in there, and about a half a cup of parsley. I'm gonna add a half a cup of Parmesan cheese and three cloves of garlic, a half a cup of walnuts. Now, we like walnuts. Most pesto recipes call for um, pine nuts. I don't like pine nuts in it. I either make it with pecans or walnuts, or I've made it with almonds occasionally. One teaspoon of salt, and then we're gonna just put the top on the food processor. Susan, aren't walnuts healthier than pine nuts too? I think they are, and we have like the flavor of them, but I toasted them just a little bit. I'm gonna pulse this a couple times to kind of break it up. And then we're going to start the processor on low and add a half a cup of olive oil. And this can be just any olive oil. Um, and it says, I've used half a cup, we like it a little thicker and then thin it out with pasta water so it's not quite so oily, but you can make it with more oil if you prefer. <laughs> and actually today I'm going to add just a tiny bit more. Now we like pesto with pasta, but we also like pesto on chicken bake. I put spread it on top of a chicken breast and put it in the oven and then we add like sliced tomatoes and put on top of it and you almost have a caprese chicken when it comes out right before it comes out we put um, mozzarella cheese on it and a little bit of parmesan and then you just you've got a great dish that all you really need to go with that is some pasta um, so here I'm going to make this a little bit thinner today. There we go. how much basil we had so we might have had a little more than four cups but that's the pesto and again you can make a lot of different things another thing I've made with it is salmon to put it on top of salmon and then I wrapped prosciutto around it and baked it and it was yummy so you can do a lot of things with a little bit of pesto and this keeps in the refrigerator very well it freezes well as well also so if you're in an area where basil goes in the fall, you have to get rid of your basil, make pesto and freeze it. Add it to soups, add it to a lot of things. Enjoy! Today we're going to make golden tilefish and we're going to use the pesto that we made a couple of days ago. And I've had it out at room temperature so it would be easier to spread on the fish. Golden tilefish is a low fat white fish that is real delicate and sweet in flavor. It's similar to crab or lobster because that's what it eats. Um, so we're going to take some of our pesto and put it on the fish and just spread it out on the fish. We don't need to add salt because it's already got a lot of salt in the cheese and in the pesto. And just spread it out all over our fish. We're going to bake this in a 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes because we've got one small piece so it may be more like 20 because of that small piece. Just a little bit more there. Okay. And then we're going to take some sliced tomatoes and we're going to season them with just a little bit of salt and pepper. Season from on high so you get it all over all of it. And then we're going to put them on top of the fish. This will make a beautiful sauce because we're going to have some bow tie pasta we made with this, with some more pesto. So this will make, help to make a nice sauce for that. And then we're going to take just a little bit of panko breadcrumb and sprinkle on top of this. See how easy this was to put together because we already got our pesto made. Now that's going to go in a 375 degree oven for probably 15 to 20 minutes because of the size of those fish fillets. Is this the only kind of fish we could use to do this? Uh, no, we could use any white fish. You could use grouper, you could use um, 
really any white fish that you had on hand that you wanted to use. Uh, I would probably say grouper, mutton snapper, a firmer white fish, because if we're gonna bake it, it'll hold together better if it's a firmer white fish. You want me to tell you a little bit about golden towel? Because probably everybody hasn't heard about it. Why don't you do that? I'm gonna put this in the oven while you do that. Okay. Well, basically, a golden tile fish is unusual in that it lives at very, uh, at depth, between 500 and 1,000 feet. And it, it's another peculiarity of the fish. It, it actually lives uh, 25 to, they found uh, fish that have been as old as 35 or 45 years old. So it lives a long, long time. It doesn't school like many fish. It burrows into the floor of the ocean and it makes tunnels and it lives in there wow. so the predators uh, can't get it and also so it can jump out and get what it's going to eat. It eats lobster and it eats um, mollusks, mollusks and all kinds of little you know things like that so it tastes like lobster, what it eats, yeah. what it eats. Yeah. and that makes it really wonderful. Really sweet and delicious. Yes. And, uh, and when they catch it, they have to, because it's so, it's so deep, lots of times they have to catch it and use an electronic reel to bring it in. Because remember, if they're down a thousand feet and they gotta reel that thing in, that's something. They gotta have an electric reel. Yeah. Yep, and it's a very big, it's a very big fish. Um, it's usually, it can be 40 inches, 45 inches. It can be smaller, but that's, there's some limitations on what they can get. Um, and it has, the reason they call it golden tile is it has little spots on its back. It's mostly green, but with spots. And it looks a little bit prehistoric. So that's that's about golden tile. But believe me, it is delicious. It's really good. Really, really good. So to, to go with this, we're gonna have, we made lasagna Wednesday night. So I made some pasta sheets and we had some leftover. So I made some bow tie pasta. And just to make a bow tie pasta to shape it, you just cut them into squares about two inches, twist, Pinch the middle tube and twist it, and then push it down, and that makes a bow tie pasta. So it's just a square, huh? Just a square that we've twisted and turned into a bow tie. And to come go with this, we're going to have a salad, and we've got what we've got in the bowl already is a little bit of orange juice, and I did that by just squeezing out some of the. I sectioned an orange, and then just took what was left and squeezed it to get this much orange juice. And to that, now I'm going to eyeball this, but I'll tell you about how much is in there. There's about a tablespoon of orange juice in there, and we're gonna to add to that about a table, teaspoon of vinegar. We're gonna add a fat tablespoon of good olive oil, and this is Spanish olive oil that we order from olive oil lovers. They carry a lot of different kinds of olive oil. We're gonna put about a fat teaspoon of Dijon mustard. If you've never made salad dressing, it's easy to make and it's so much better than what you buy in the store. A splash of soy sauce and a little bit of honey. And then we're going to add some salt and pepper to this. And then we're going to put our vegetables in. The vegetables that go in this and the fruit is some orange, avocado, um, thin cut radishes that I cut on a mandolin, but if you don't have a mandolin, you could just cut them as thin as you can get them with a knife and a little salt and pepper. And this, we saw a salad similar to this on the um, kitchen on the Food Network, but we kind of changed it up a little bit because we didn't have all the ingredients that they had. So, and that's, and I always encourage you to taste your dressings. Hmm, that's about right. And be sure you got it sweet enough or tart enough the way you like your flavors. And then we're gonna just add the orange segments. We're gonna add the avocado and the radishes, a little bit of romaine lettuce that we've chopped up. Now here's another trick. The dressing's in the bottom of the bowl and the lettuce was the last thing that went in. So I'm gonna put this back in the fridge until our fish gets ready and then we'll toss it so it doesn't get soggy. But your dressing's in the bottom and you've got the oranges and radishes and stuff so it's not getting to your lettuce to make it soggy so you can wait till the last minute to actually toss this. So we'll be back when our fish is done. Okay, our fish is done, and we're going to make our get our fish ready, our pasta, and we're also going to cut some rustic Spanish bread that we're going to have as a side for this, and we have a video coming up of how to make. This is just what's left of the loaf we've had, but a beautiful rustic Spanish bread, and we're going to 
to start with that, we're going to mix it. We have some good olive oil that we're going to put a little bit of salt in, a little bit of pepper in, a little bit of red pepper flake. And then we're going to take a fork and kind of stir that up and put that, oh, made a mess, on the table. And that'll be what we dip our bread in. But now we've got our pasta coming over that we cooked, our bow ties that we talked about earlier. And we're going to take the liquid that was left in the dish when we made our fish, because it's got all that fishy goodness and the pesto goodness, and pour it in there with our uh, pasta. We're going to put a little splash of milk in with that, because that's what we learned in Rome in our cooking class. It always helps to make pesto a little bit calmer. And we're going to take a little bit more of our pesto and put in there with it. And that'll go on the bottom of the dish when we get ready to serve it. And we're going to let that sit for a minute. Because that'll continue to kind of soak up some of that liquid. And be all ready to go. And then look at our fish, how pretty that turned out. Isn't that gorgeous? And that is going to be yummy. And then our salad is ready to be tossed. And look at that pretty orange. Isn't that pretty? It's got all the spring colors in it. It's a beautiful spring salad. So we're going to put the pasta down in the bowls and then put the fish on top of it, make our Spanish bread, and that's our fish dinner. Enjoy.